Guys, we are going to be talking about a market that was submitted to us. I'll see if she's in here. Asanya Holmes had emailed us a, uh, a few markets to consider, Herve, and one yep. that she threw out there was Rochester, New York, right? Uh, okay. Yeah. This is like as if DeRosa were considering investing in Rochester. This is, we're, we're hopping into Herve's brain here, Herve, so take us through it. Can you, so folks, again, one of the uh, websites I like to go to the best, one of my favorite websites, free, 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 free websites I like to go to is worldpopulationreview.com. It has a lot of pop-up ads, so you're just going to have to deal with that because it's free and whatnot. Just type in the name of the city or the market that you are looking to invest. Don't put the state, just put the city and whatnot, and you'll see the list of the city states, and then you just click it. So I went ahead and I put in Rochester, Rochester, New York pops up. And so now many of the graphs that they, sh many of the cities that they have information on, they go ahead and they put up a graph. Sometimes it's a 10 year graph, 20 year graph. Rochester been around for a long time. So this is a many, many, many year graph. Now, okay, population as of 2024, 207,000. Checks the box from population size for us. You remember me talking about that about 20, 30 minutes ago. I have to admit, on this graph, we like to see things go up to the right. This one, as you can see, is on the decline. I am not sure why since, what is that, 1940 or 1960, this pop population here in Rochester has been on decline. And then since 2020, declined since uh, of 1.72%, okay? There's a lot, a lot of information here on this particular website. Even on the forecast, they're expecting a population to be 203,000 in five years, down from 207,000 today. That compares to 241,000 back in 1980, 220,000 in the year 2000, right? So we got significant, not significant, but we got population, continuous population decline in Rochester, New York. I, I have to tell you, I knowing that we were going to discuss Rochester today, one of the things that stood out, I was a little concerned about was and we didn't talk about this earlier in regards to metrics that we look at. It's there's there's a high level of poverty here in Rochester. Mm -hmm. I don't exactly know why there's a high level of poverty. If I were to take a stab at it, I wouldn't be surprised if because a lot of jobs have moved out of Rochester from back in the days. And I think you got you know two issues here. As if you can see my um, my mouse here, two companies here: Xerox and Kodak. Okay, so Xerox and Kodak, right? The old school names, kind of like GE and what's You don't hear these names said so much in today's world. I forget the last time I said the word Kodak out loud. It's been a long know? time since we right. said Kodak. Yeah. Right? We, we always say iPhones, right? And, and, right. and right. Android right. phones and things like that. So, you back know, in my day, back in my day, you know, uh, you used to have right. the, you know, you had to be worried about exposing film in the sunlight and everything else like that. So, so Kodak has, you know, closed a lot of facilities up there. Xerox, I wouldn't be surprised if they have shrunk as well. And that probably contributed to some job decline over the years um, at Rochester. So it's something I think about. I'm just scrolling down here. I don't want to spend too much time, but it just kind of shows you the wealth and the depth of information. Wait, what is that? Here. That population pyramid. Real quick, yeah. just talk us through what are we looking at there? We're just looking at the median age of both men, uh, men and women in Rochester, New okay. York, right? Because, you know, it doesn't hurt to take a look at what is the median age of this city that I'm potentially looking to invest, right? And so it says here between the two, 32 point nine, right? So 33 years old kind of a thing. So, you know, that's, so to me, I'm thinking, okay, 33 years old, young adult folks that have, if they had gone to law school or business school, they're out, they're starting to work. They probably haven't reached peak earnings yet, but they are slowly on their way, right? So, you know, there's a good chance that this age group are is are going to be the residents of your apartment complex, right? And the a this this age group, if they are making good money, right, they like to have the fancier amenities, if you will, um, and whatnot. So just kind of keep that in mind. But what we still need to check out are the industries um, that really drive uh, the economy in Rochester, New York. So that's something to go ahead um, and take a look at. Um, also tells me here that 37% rate of home ownership, you know, that's pretty good. So all in 37% 
of folks up here, they are owners, 63% are renters. That's pretty big. I typically don't see a renter percentage that big. I typically see a renter percentage between 50, 53% kind of a thing. So 63% is pretty big. That tells me that, you know, median income over here may not be very high if folks aren't able to go ahead and, you know, afford purchases of single family homes and things like that. So, so World Population Review is certainly one of the, one of the websites that I like to go to a lot. It's one of the first ones I go to anytime we begin to research a new market, really, again, for population and population growth. I'm going to stop sharing this one so I can share you a new one. And <laughs> I see I've got places here. This looks all very, very different up here. Let me see. One of the ones that I also like to go to is... Matt, you see my window here? I got you. All right, Co cool. Co -star. So, hey, listen. You're showing off the fancy pants, Irvin. We I, pay big I, money for this. I know. We pay big money. I am not recommending people go out and get a subscription to CoStar and so on and so forth. But so, yes, we, we're cheating here a little bit because this is what DeRosa has and everything else. I don't go ahead and recommend you guys go out and get a subscription to CoStar. But I would recommend you getting a subscription to Bright, Pest, Bright Investor if you will, co-star's little cousin, because it's way, 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 way more affordable. <laughs> well, now, I don't know if Donato would like that, but hey, listen, being attached to co-star is not the worst thing in the world, right? But you get some information here in regards to information on the multifamily market within Rochester itself, and particularly the sub-market. And this is the downtown Rochester sub-market. There are other sub-markets. I focus specifically here on the downtown Rochester one, right? One of the things that we look at here, average market cap rate of this particular or sub-market 8.2%. That's pretty high. Some people jump at that and say, oh my God, we got to go into this sub-market. This mar the, Look at this cap rate. It's 8.2%. Guys, be very, very careful when you take a look at cap rates. It could be a little misleading. You're not exactly sure what is the driver behind that 8.2% cap rate. Something to take a look at, right? We, we're going to put it to the side, but we're not going to go ahead and make 100% decision based on it because we got to figure out you know, what's behind it and things like that. These are the things, the metrics that I look at the most over here. We start talking about asking rents and so on and so forth, and that they're up, they're growing, right? So I got a five and a half percent vacancy rate that has increased a little bit from last year of 5.02, but I got market asking rents of 1350, and that's up almost 3% versus last year. So I like the direction of the market asking rent. I like the fact that my occupancy is, is still nicely above 90% as well. And then there's zero under construction units, very little supply coming on board. Now, again, you know, you guys just bear with me for a second. I know, again, you don't have the subscription of CoStar. Let's go back to the free stuff. And one of the most free websites <laughs> I like most is good old Google. Can you see it? Did, it? did it come up, Matt? Yes, sir. All right. So median income of Rochester, New York. Yeah. Yeah. Now, again, we talked earlier about we like to see the household number versus the individual number. Matt, I I'm yeah. going to... I'm going to start here, but I'm not going to end here. I'm going to do a little bit more research on this median income number. This median income number is four years old. That's the one thing of sometimes about relying on government data. The government data could be outdated data and whatnot. We just, our government's just slow like that. It is what it is. But, but I, so I think it's a little bit higher. It's not going to be that significantly higher. 2020, as we all know, was a pandemic and everything else like that. So, you know, when I, when I look at the high poverty rate of, Rochester coupled with this household income of, you know, just under $38,000, you know, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I would have preferred to see something in the mid forties and whatnot. So again, I'm not running away from Rochester, but I'm just keeping this statistic on the side as I am kind of building my list, if you will. There you go. There you go. I, I so far, Urbe, and we only got a few more minutes here. I, I want to respect okay. that. They, sure. they, but but so far, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I'm not seeing a lot of things that I like here. Let me just regurgitate. Right. I'm seeing a declining population. Right. Uh, I'm seeing companies that I heard of when I was <laughs> in the 80s that were big right. players, but I'm not seeing companies that I heard of so much now. 
um, and I'm seeing a median income that would struggle to afford a thousand dollars a month in rent. Right? That's right. And that, so that's just my, my, you know, my layman, you know, I'm not smartest man in the world, Irvay, but my layman's eyes are telling me that this is not a big glaring green light looking at me at Rochester, New York. I'm, so, I'm with you. I, I would, I would walk away with the same sentiment, Matt. I would walk away definitely with the same sentiment. Let's see here. Um, I am going to bring up real quick this neighborhood scout. Like you said, I know we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to bring up this neighborhood scout. And um, while everybody's if, bringing that up, guys, real quick, if you guys have questions for Irve or questions for for me about market selections, the first M of multifamily, please pop them into the Q and A now so I can jump on them and read them off in in that. But, but yeah, Irve, keep going. Thank you. Yeah. So we, we we talked about hey, we like to take a look at which industries are driving the economy for a particular market. Here you go, neighborhoodscout.com, free website, healthcare, 20% of jobs, education, 13.5%, right? Just like Matt was saying, meds and eds, retail 11, manufacturing 9, accommodations, you know, hotels or whatnot, 8%. So I like this spread. I like this spread. There's no one industry that dominates the economic drivers of Rochester. So I like this spread and I like the industries that are driving this economy, particularly with healthcare and education being the two predominant ones and whatnot. And then the economic data is, you know, the BLS.com, Bureau of Labor Statistics.com, BLS.com. So as of February to just last month, the, what is this? This is uh, CPI. So computer, uh, excuse me, computer, consumer product index uh, inflation reading up 2.4% year over year. Seems like they, this is more the Northeast region of New York than anything, or excuse me, the Northeast region of US more than anything else. They didn't have it specifically for Rochester, but 2.4%, which is, which is not terrible itself. And then there's a nice economic summary PDF that you can also find at bls.gov, Bureau of Labor Statistics. It gives you a little snapshot of the economy of Rochester. It shows here the unemployment rate as of December 23 was 4.1%. That's up 100 bips on a year-over-year -year basis. Also shows change in job growth. Job growth as of December 23 grew 0.5% versus December 2022. So folks, that's it. As you see, we didn't pay a damn thing to access any of these sites except for CoStar. Don't get a CoStar subscription. But as you can see, worldpopulationreview.com, bls.gov, neighborhoodscout.com, and so on and so forth. As a matter of fact, real, real quick on neighborhoodscout.com, we talked about those heat maps. You see the tab here called crime. You go to crime, you scroll down, and then this is the heat map for specifically Rochester, New York, the lighter purple, so-called less dangerous areas, and the deeper purple, more dangerous areas and whatnot. And you can go ahead and zoom in and they'll brighten up. It, so if you have the address of your property, then boom. Eric, um, leave it on that real quick. Uh, yeah. or, or really, uh, yeah. Eric Platter wanted to know, what is the size of the market? Is this a city or do you use the MSA data when you're looking at markets? I'm looking at the city. I'm looking at the city. You know, I, I'm I'm looking at the MSA if the city is a very, very small city, because then I want to see what, what are the economic drivers for that very small city? Is the MSA close by? What kind of jobs are in that MSA and so on and so forth? But for Rochester alone, I don't need to look at the MSA. I'm looking just at the city. It's a population of 207,000. It has to be a city at that size that has to be able to stand on its own. And uh, Eric Lahoda wanted to know, or a do you, when you're looking at markets, I mean, I, I'll answer this one. I sure. just, how do you find a market with that trial and error? I, I think that there's, you know, however many thousands of markets in the United States you guys could consider <laughs> investing in. What I suggest you do, and we were probably submitted this market by Sonia because she has uh, history, personal relationships, has heard the good things about Rochester, whatever reason it is. She's heard Rochester is a good place and wanted to hear what we had to say about it. Fine. I would suggest, Eric, that you look at markets that you've either heard are good for investing, that you are considering investing in, markets you live in, markets you're already investing in now, or markets that you're considering researching. It's a bit of a trial and error. It's a little bit of detective work. There's not one like silver bullet metrics we can give you that's going to spit out the best market in the US to invest in, because guess what? There's not a good market. It, a, there's not 
one's one best market in the U.S. There's a lot of great markets in the U.S. to invest in, but it has to do with markets that maybe you have relationships with, an affinity for, some in some level of infiltration, some unfair advantage. You live there, your sister lives there, you know all the brokers that are there, whatever it is, whatever inside track you got for that market. That is why, and my, my homework I would give you, Eric, is go and make a list of 10 markets you're either curious about, interested in, used to live in, know people in, have some inroads in or something like that. It's just one for the, like, let's say Irving had green lighted Rochester and he didn't, you know, just, you know, yeah. but if you decide, Eric, great, I want to hear more about Rochester, but you, you know, no one there, you know, no inroads there. You know, you've never been there not even hundred percent sure how to get there. Couldn't find it on a map. I probably wouldn't recommend you look at Rochester. I would say you take the method that Irving presented today and his market hunter tool and use it for markets you do have relationships in. Irve, I got to take it home here. I got to I got to keep okay. rolling to uh, to our, our next conversation because what we want to do, guys, we're, what Irve and I wanted to show you guys here is what the Derosa mindset, Derosa methodology is when we pick markets. You witnessed a bit of the methodology that that, of, that we use to evaluate markets, and uh, and and one tool that we use obviously is the Market Hunter tool. This this uh, guy right here, he gave you guys a little bit of inside baseball that we use for that tool. What we want to talk to you guys about now is if you guys really want to get serious about your multifamily business, you guys certainly could muddle your way through it and maybe figure it out on your own. You got a 50-50 shot at doing that. Or you could consider the DeRosa Accelerator Program as a few folks here on this webinar, multiple accelerator students here on the webinar that are, that are very successful and are taking their business to the next level because because of the leadership that the DeRosa Multifamily Accelerator Program is taking them, right? Here's a few things listed here that what you get. And that's one of our great students. Amy had some nice things to say about the program. And it's really, you know, given her a lot on earning trust of brokers, picking a market and everything like that. And here's just a quick screen share for the large community we have that are sharing deals in interesting conversations, talking a shop with each other about the multifamily business that they're doing in the market and, you know, ideas and everything all with the DeRosa team. Um, when you guys join the multifamily accelerator, Irve, just a quick to highlight here, they get not only Probably, I think you did the math. It's now in the teens in hours of online training. As you said, video, video modules that teach folks how to hunt, the four quadrants right there. Teach folks how to hunt, how to underwrite. A, by the way, guys, DeRosa's own, pad, the, the underwriting tool we paid money to have created for us is part of this program, right? And hours of video training on how to use it. So if you guys are an underwriter, that tool is part of this program. Of training for me, uh, yours truly on how to raise millions of dollars. There's, there's even a program in there called How to Raise a Million in 90 Days or Less. A million bucks would help you guys way towards your first deal. There is a program in there on how to do it. There's how to build your website up, how to do a, a marketing presentation for folks. And then the Justin Fraser of our team has hours of video content, including how to do due diligence and everything like that. But guys, it doesn't stop there. You get daily office hours. Irvay did the math uh, for me the other day. There's 72 hours of, of access to the DeRosa team in 90 days of one-on-one -on -one calls you can have with the DeRosa folks, including me and Irve and Justin and our marketing director and the rest of our team. And those are, I, I misspoke at one-on-one. -on -one. Those are group calls with a lot of students and you and the DeRosa staff to help you uh, talk about your sh talk shop with you about where your business is headed and what, what we can do to help you guys hit your goals. On top of all that, we have a coaching program that you guys are going to be getting access to as well. And that's a one-on-one -on -one program. That's you and Irve sitting down or you and Matt sitting down or you and Justin sitting down and going through your business with a fine tooth comb and developing a specific with a capital S specific action plan that you need to take to get yourself to the next level. We take the time to understand your business and then we take the time to give you direct one-on-one -on -one guidance with where you guys want to go.